how it works, backfilling a tunnel under a house the right way. Now, this is an interesting process that a lot of people don't know anything about. So first of all, what is backfilling? Well, a lot of times here in Texas, we actually tunnel up under a house to get to a sewer or water repair. Now, if you're a plumber or you own a plumbing company, this may be something that you do. It may be something that you specialize in. But here in Texas, with most houses being slab houses and they're built on the black clay, the Texas soil that we have, we have a problem because when it gets wet or when it gets too dry, it expands and contracts. It can cause leaks on the sewer line. It can cause leaks on the water line. So what we have to do is come in and perform slab leak detection. Then what do we have to do after that? Well, we've got to locate exactly where the leak is, whether it's on the sewer line or a water line, locate it and get into that spot to make the repair. Once we get to that spot, then we start looking at the back filling, meaning the dirt we took out, we want to get most of it back in. Now, it's impossible to get it all back in. You cannot take undisturbed earth, dig it out, put it in a big pile out in the yard, cover it with plastic, wait two or three days, and expect it to all go back in. But you can get about 80, 85% of it back in if you do things right. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, make sure you stay till the end. I'm going to give you two reasons, two why you want to make sure you use a professional company every time. So first of all, how does backfilling work? Well, once you get it outside, you get it piled up, the plumbers get in, make their repair, then they get the inspection done. Well, now it's time to put that dirt back. Now, there's different ways to do it, but what our crews do that I've seen that works best is they literally take five gallon buckets and move the dirt in to the furthest end of the tunnel, meaning the furthest part up under the house. They pack it as much as they can by hand. Then they take, well, a chipping hammer. They take chipping hammers that have a flat bit on the end and they literally use that to help pack that in. They want to pack it in tight. If you're a plumber, you want to make sure that your water line repair or your sewer line repair is anchored properly so, well, so they don't move it around. Now, we've actually had that mistake in the past. We made a repair and the guys got in, they didn't put enough anchors in. So whenever the dig crew went back and packed it in, it actually pulled something apart. Well, then I had to pay them to go back, dig it up again so we could go in and make that repair. You wanna make sure the dig crew's not hauling away too much dirt to where it makes it look like they put more in than they really did. You wanna make sure you look at it before they start backfilling it and before they haul anything away, just to make sure. So what are the challenges of tunneling? Well, there's a few. To be honest, digging a tunnel the right way, you need enough room to get in there and work. Now, when we lay out tunnels, we wanna make sure we have access holes, and there may just be one, depending on how far in your tunnel is going, depending on where the actual spot repair is that you're trying to make, or the line replacement. The challenges that you should run into are what other lines are around there. We've actually gone in to tunnel under a house. There's piers, there's been foundation work before. There's a sewer line where maybe we didn't know it was. There's water lines maybe coming up in a wall. So there's things in there you may have to work around. Just make sure that the dig crew that you use is a professional dig crew. They're gonna look at everything there, they're gonna do things right. Another issue that you can have is some cities, if your dig crew nicks a water line, and I don't mean nicks it and makes a hole, I just mean say they're digging with a chipping hammer. Now, a chipping hammer that they dig with is actually a little jackhammer. It's got a bit that comes out and it's got a spade tip on the end. So they're not actually under there digging with shovels. But what if they hit a water line? What if they put a dent in it? What if they put a nick in it? If the inspector sees that, he's gonna ask you to change that. Because if you put that nick in there, you could create a restriction inside the water line that could lead to a leak later, and that's something you really don't want for your customers. The other challenges of tunneling are access. Once we go in so far under a house, we want to try and make sure we've got another route of egress. We've got an entry and an exit point somewhere else. That way, if anything does fall in or you've got different people working in different areas, everybody doesn't have to stop just to get around them. Now, when it comes to backfilling, you want to look at the safety for backfilling. What is it like? Well, it's almost exactly like when they're digging the tunnel. They need to make sure that the sides are kept straight. Now, like I said, here in Texas, we've got a black clay type earth that the house is set on and they've been sitting there forever, so it's packed pretty tight. We normally don't have to worry about any sloughing off or anything like that because of the way that we dig the ditches. 
our ditches are normally about three feet deep and they are square. Good thing is I'm not a small guy and they're normally dug big enough and good enough that we can get in and actually work two people side by side or we can actually pass each other in a tunnel under the house. Now one thing people always ask me about is, is it better to tunnel from outside than inside? Well, it really depends on where the leak is, what kind of flooring there is, and are you gonna be able to get proper materials in there if you need to? Meaning, if you're replacing a straight sewer line, say 20 feet, and you wanna make a little two foot by two foot hole in the house and tunnel 10 feet each way, it's gonna make that kind of hard. Can it be done? Absolutely. But also, you're gonna to have to put this dirt inside the house. So think about this, tunneling from outside the home versus inside, is there a difference in price? Well, if you're tunneling from inside, there needs to be a spot inside to pile all that dirt. Now, if this was a sewer leak, you've got raw sewage in this dirt that you are now piling up in the house. There could be flies, there could be maggots, there could be all kinds of thing in there. There's definitely gonna be plenty of fecal matter, so you wanna think about what you're piling up in there. The only thing that would really lead to a big difference in price is where is the leak? If the leak is dead center of the house and I can go through that floor without messing up hardwoods, without messing up tile, without messing up anything that maybe can't be replaced, well, that may be a good idea. I can always put down wooden plastic and leave my dirt there. Think about it, do you want a six foot pile of dirt in your house for a week or so while they're making repairs? Probably not, and no, really, it shouldn't take that long. So what are the two big things you need to think about when having this done? Well, first of all, hire a professional company. There are way too many plumbers that die every year from tunneling up under a house. It should have been a typical day on the job, how a North Texas plumber died under a house in a Flower Mound neighborhood. They had dug a tunnel to get to that troubled spot when without warning, the ground gave way. It is a job we often take for granted and fail to realize the dangers it carries. But tonight, a plumbing problem turned deadly in this Flower Mound neighborhood, claiming the life of a devoted father of three. And to be honest, they're normally not using dig crews. Normally, a plumbing company has the plumbers go out and dig it themselves. That's something that since I started doing this, I said I would never do. I want this tunnel dug professionally, and I wanna make sure that it is safe before my men or me, any of us, go inside there. And another good thing about using a professional company, we always get a structural engineer to come out and look at it. They look at the dirt, they look at the hole, we do a drawing so they see exactly what we remove and they look at all dirt before it gets hauled off. So this helps make it safer for the plumbers. I mean, really, do you wanna know that a plumber's died under your house trying to fix your plumbing? Probably not. So hopefully you will get this done by a trained professional. So like, subscribe, and ring the bell if you got anything out of this. I'm Roger Wakefield, helping you make more money in the trades.